We saw previously how the actors form a hierarchy and parents have supervision. And we saw that the parent can decide what happens with an actor uh, when something goes wrong. We can set the supervisor strategy and then we can give it uh, different ways of handling things. We put in a resume and a restart. There's also a stop and an escalate. Those are the different options that we have and you can make it so it responds in different ways to different forms of, um, of things that can go wrong. In order to really kind of understand what's going on and to help realize how you're going to clean things up, for example, when an actor goes down, what if that actor had resources associated with it, we also need to understand the actor life cycle. And so if we look in the API at the actor trait, there are a number of methods in here that are part of the life cycle. The two that we will generally want to work with are pre-start and post-stop. These are, as the name implies, called before the actor starts up and after the actor has stopped. So pre-start will be called before the actor receives any messages and post-stop will be called after the actor's uh, done receiving messages. So after this is called no more messages will go in. There's also a pre-restart and a post restart, which you probably shouldn't call uh, unless there's something that you really can't do in the pre start or post stop. Uh, and they deal with, as the names imply, the process of restarting actors when something went wrong and their parents said that they should be restarted. In addition, there is the fact that the actor is created. And so what I'm going to do is with our child actor, we put in some things here. We have a division by zero, which throws an exception, and we resume from that. And we also put in this uh, message that causes the actor to throw an exception that's not a uh, that's not an arithmetic exception, and so this will actually cause the actor to be restarted. And we'd like to see what happens with that. So the first thing that has to happen because this is Scala is there is the instantiation of the actor. And so we can put a print statement here that will basically be printed whenever the actor uh, starts up. Then we can override some of those methods. So we can override pre-start um, and if we look in the API pre-start and post-stop do not take any arguments now I actually do not wish oh, I need a def in here I do not wish to kind of alter the behavior here so I am going to go ahead and call the version on the super type so this will the super keyword, uh, you might recall, can be used to refer to the methods that are in your super type. So we are going to call the pre-start in the actor, but I also want to print out a message that says that we are here in this method. And then I want to do the same thing, override def post stop where we'll do super dot post stop print line post stop probably shouldn't care about capitalization but I'll alter that and then the other two methods are the post restart and pre restart uh, once again you probably should not be putting much stuff in here the pre-start and the post-stop are really good for cleaning up resources. If the actor had access to files that were open or network connections that were open, or if you're doing database stuff, you have database connections that are open, those would be acquired potentially in the pre-restart, which means that they need to be released in the post-stop okay, so that you're not wasting resources here. Okay, override def 
override def pre restart. I don't want that as a capital pre restart. And the pre restart and post uh, restart actually do take method or take arguments because they are told what it was that happened. So we have a reason which is a throwable and a message which is an option of any. Okay. And once again, we're just going to escalate this call the super of pre restart and then print line pre restart. And copy that. You can paste it and make the post version. The post only got a reason, not a message. Okay. Now we save that and we run. Okay, and there's a fair bit of stuff printing out here. Child 1 was created, or child 0 was created, child 1 was created. They both have a pre start. In fact, maybe this would be easier to understand if we don't create a second child. It'll keep the amount of output less. So we can see exactly what's happening on one, one child actor. Child was created. Pre-start was called. It got the message that uh, had it print two. Now you'll note here that the message that caused it to have a numeric exception didn't actually cause anything to happen with the life cycle here. That's because we did a resume. Remember the resume is just saying, oh, you're okay, keep going, nothing happened. So the actor doesn't shut down, it doesn't restart back up, nothing interesting goes on uh, when we do this divide by four zero. And, it, and then we do the divide for two, it prints out the two, then we call the bad stuff, okay? And that causes it to throw an exception. At that point, the actor that we had originally stops, and then we get a pre-restart call. It actually creates a new child, uh, because it is, it's disposing of the old one, and then we get another call to pre-start on the new child, we get a call to post restart, which sends this new child the information about why the previous child had been uh, destroyed. And then at the very end here, it calls the post stop on the replacement for the child that had the bad stuff happen. So once again, what you're mainly going to do is you're not going to write these two methods very often. Most of the time, if you have resources that are associated with an actor, you're going to override these and make it so that these do uh, what you need for acquiring the resources or freeing up the resources. I know that it's very likely my students are going to need to write post-stop methods that do things like closing off uh, streams or sockets uh, for, for some of the actors that they'll wind up writing because we don't want those actors to retain those resources indefinitely.